Hi, I'm David Holbrook, Festival Director of Mountain Film and Telluride. I'm sitting here with Paul Miller, aka DJ Spooky, who spoke at our Climate Solutions Symposium here and uh, is doing so much more. Hey, Paul, welcome to Mountain Film. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm loving it. I mean, I went for an amazing hike yesterday to the peak of Ajax Mountain. And you went did the Via Ferrata? Via Ferrata, and then we went further up, and there's this crazy house with a waterfall. Uh -huh. Like, you know, just incredible. Um, you ever been to a place like this? I've been to mountains in Switzerland, I've been to mountains uh, in Antarctica, all sorts of spots, but this one is kind of a beautifully peaceful and also everybody's very just warm hearted, great energy. Um, wow. yeah, we really we try and bring that and, and I, I love how you've tapped into that. Early on you said when you got here, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I'm glad I'm here <laughs> basically, right? Yeah. And what's, be what's beautiful about, I think so far what I've experienced is that it's an organic kind of film process. And when mm -hmm. I say organic, uh, that has a lot of cliches, but what I feel is different uh, when I say organic here is that it's about people and everyone has their armor off a little bit and they're, they're just, it's a smaller scene, it's more focused and everybody's kind of exchanging information, uh, best practices, ideas, and above all, they're friendly. You know, it's, I go to a lot of film festivals and what I love about this is that it's, it's smaller and it's more focused. I, I think that's right and for me, we're in this little box canyon, we have so many amazing people here. And I think they ping off each other. They, they, they create something that my hope goes out beyond this, this valley. And the other day we did the Climate Solutions Symposium. You spoke so eloquently about, about your work and your perception on this. And, and for, from your perspective as an artist, as, as so many different things, moving forward in climate, what do you feel we need to do? Well, I mean, this is a strange century. I mean, if you look at the 21st century versus the 20th, the interesting difference is the 20th century was the century of mass movements, uh, more wars, more people getting killed, more people moving around than ever before in human history. Uh, in the 21st century, what we're seeing is more people having access to information than ever before in human history. Um, so we, I think people are aware that there's bad things happening. Um, that's not the problem. Raising awareness and getting word out, I think that's critical. But above all, creating a, an emotional response. Mm -hmm. um, if we're seeing record level storms like Sandy or just what happened in Oklahoma, what's incredible is that people, they know something's happening. It's, it's hard to argue with a storm that just smashed your house. I don't care what right wing Republicans are gonna say about the facts of climate change, their house gets smashed, they're gonna have to really have to face reality. So what ends up happening with, I think, the progressive movements and the artists and so on, is we have to figure out how to raise awareness and then focus it because it's, uh, it, there's a huge ocean of noise right now. And um, what do you feel art's role, music's role, culture's role is in this? I mean, especially in America. Well, first and foremost, I'm an artist. I, I'm not a policy maker, but I think that a lot of times people can envision policy and that policy will be deeply flawed. If you look at our prison industrial complex where they're throwing zillions of people in jail, imagine if, say for example, if they focus them on re-education and figuring out ways to make, create better literacy so they would have a stakeholder relationship to our society. Kind of like yeah, healthcare, or, if we, yeah, so if we healthcare. worked in prevention rather than yeah. just curing, it'd be so much they, cheaper. Well, they make more money off you being sick. I mean, right. you know, so imagine the, the oil industry, and that's why I'm a huge fan of Bill McKibben, I'm a huge fan of Lawrence Lessig, and this idea of open source culture. Um, education is critical, and right now, I think, the beautiful thing about our species uh, on this planet and the more twisted thing about it is that we're aware. I mean, if you're a huge termite mound that's like overgrown your ecosystem niche, that c that's gonna collapse. We know that, I think, we're looking at like Easter Island, we're looking at other examples where human societies have overused their resources, but we're not being able to compare and then act. It's eerie because like, I think a lot of people are aware. It's just. It's kind of like your, your hands in a fire and you're like, oh, I'm burning, you know, and then they're, 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 you don't take your hand out of the fire. It's like, you know? <laughs> it's kind of an eerie thing because you assume people don't, like if I go to China a lot, now at this point the pollution in Beijing is incredible. People are wearing space helmets, you know, but they still are driving a car and they're still, they were their culture just even seven years ago, everybody's riding a bicycle, which is incredible. And it seems you know? to me art, part of its role is to, almost decipher it, decode this, show, the, show these connections, because I think people sometimes need that. You can tell them that's one thing, but if they see it and then they feel it through the art, do you agree? Yeah, I mean, when I look at Werner Herzog, he's one of my favorite filmmakers. He was in Antarctica when I was there as well. He's on the other side of the continent. Uh, he, when he did his film there, it was interesting, the response. Uh, when I also see other sort of advocacy uh, documentary work like um, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, 
or the new film Dirty Wars uh, that sure. I really like by uh, Shalaski. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his right. Um, or Shahil, the Scahill. Scahill. Jeremy uh, Scahill. Jeremy Dirty Scahill. Wars. Great yeah. film. Um, you know, people I think are facing a desert of information on one hand in, in the mainstream media, and that's where documentaries and film festivals like this are so critical for for catalyzing people. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a passion about information, a passion about the craft of that. And it's not just like you're gonna put a film out, you ha it has to be interesting. I mean, because you can make a documentary saying climate change bad, uh, starving people bad, you know, but if it doesn't strike an emotional chord with people, it's not gonna do anything. No, I, I think that's right. And, and what I look at, I guess, I look at art and music and filmmaking and all these different things that clearly so interrelate really is variations in storytelling. And I think what we need to do is, is tell a new story. And, and what I look for is festival director. I look for the people like yourself. I look for the filmmakers and the films that I feel are, are trying to do that and propel us into, to guide us in the 21st century. I mean, you're an interesting figure. I was planning on being a diplomat, and I know yeah. your, your father was a diplomat. Yeah, of course. And diplomacy mm -hmm. is about the art of the possible, like pr laying out options, oh, beautiful. giving people a sense of saying, if you're going to do this, you're going to have some serious bad consequences. If you're going to do this, maybe not so bad consequences, but at least let's put some options out in front of you. And these you know? are possible. Yeah, and it like, gives people a sense of possibility. But it, one of the funny things about film festivals is you're seeing a, a, a huge array of perspectives, and I think that that's so beautiful. Um, and in the era of the internet, uh, where everybody can watch a high definition film on Vimeo or on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, um, these are about people coming together to celebrate the medium. And I think that's where, uh, it's just for as an, as an artist, I'm showing up here in a curated environment, mm -hmm. and it's really been amazing. I've met some great people and just had some great conversation, and that's half the battle. Like, you realize you're talking about storytelling. This is the new campfire, you know, it's kind of. Uh, that's another lovely way to put it. I guess one of the things I've felt is uh, with. Mountain film, a lot of the magic is on stage in the audience. But there's this whole, that's kind of the tip. The iceberg, the rest of the iceberg is what happens in, on the street, in the coffee shops, the bars, and you know, on trails. And that people take away this powerful experience that, that, that helps them create. Yeah. And, and for you as, as a creative, do you feel that? Do you feel like a sort of rocket boost or a wind in your sails coming out of this? Oh man, I feel completely energized. And you realize the emotional response to a story or to a, a tableau, you know, or whatever a scene or a situation. It's, there are times when there's a critical mass of people and that's where you have the Renaissance, for example. Or if there's a critical mass of people and that's when you have Emerson, Thoreau, Walt Whitman, some of my favorite writers. People do, you know, stories matter, you know, and people do relate to that. And for me, as you gotta remember, I'm an artist telling stories with sound. Mm -hmm. um, so when I went to Antarctica, that project was about doing what I call acoustic portraits of ice. Or when now I'm at the Metropolitan Museum in New York, which is probably America's flagship museum. Sure. The idea was that I didn't want to deal with the physical structure of the museum at all. I wanted to figure out some ways to get people to think about the story of the space. I know that sounds conceptual, but Right now with architecture, with design, with film, everybody's facing this idea that sometimes the, the invisible things are more powerful than what you actually see. You know? That makes sense. Now, I think that's one of the problems with climate or climate change. You know, the, the, it's invisible. Yeah, you know? it's, it's difficult to, the, to get a metrics of it until you realize your, your entire forest is burning next to your house or something. Yeah, or a storm has wiped out your town. And I think, I think that's one of the real challenges is it feels abstract. And, Abstract art is one thing, abstract <laughs> science or abstract living is another, right? Right. But what's beautiful about this town, for example, I met a sculptor, uh, Anton, uh, who Vitted I guess Ford. you guys threw a fun party in this crazy mine. <laughs> we threw a fun party in this crazy mine. Yeah, so years, he yeah. just took me there this morning and was showing me this mine. Uh, and then yesterday I went hiking. Uh, and meanwhile, I'm talking about film with a sculptor. I get back, then I'm talking about film with somebody who's a, a genetic engineer. Then I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about film with someone who's a... Um, a recovered child soldier, you know, or something. These are radically different people from radically different walks of life within four blocks of one another. <laughs> or or yeah. 40 feet. Yeah, 40 feet. Yeah, well, and, that's, you know. that's what I think we try and do here is bring together all these disparate people, but with, with a similar goal, which is they, they believe in something, and they believe the world can be better, and they believe that they can have an, a part in it. And I think that comes through, especially for people who haven't been here before. Well, do you feel, I mean, this is something I'd love to ask you. Yeah, bring it. Is, do you feel that films can change the world? 
you know, I heard Josh Fox from Gaslight too said he didn't feel that. He feels that films can help people understand what needs to be done, and then they have to go and do the change. And I, I think that's valid. At the same point, I feel that that films can save lives. We're playing a film here called The Crash Reel by Lucy Walker, yeah, Lucy, you know. Yeah. And I feel that film will save lives. I feel kids will see that and they'll wear helmets in a way that they might not have otherwise. I feel that um, that Blackfish, a film we're playing here about Ticken, the, the, uh, the killer whale who killed two people, will change people's perceptions of what a place like SeaWorld is really all about. Mm -hmm. And so to that extent, I, I think they change the world in their own way. But I, but I really very much believe that documentaries are, are a powerful force. And if they're used right and, and they can galvanize people into, into real action. And don't forget, amusingly enough, uh, yesterday when, when you had commissioned me to come out here and present some of the work I did in Antarctica, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a story told in sound and composition. It's not a narrative film. So I'm, I'm a big fan of like what Philip Glass did with Godfrey Reggio. Sure, of course. Um, uh, kind of Com Scotsy. Yeah, kind of um, And, the, you know, the 60s, you know, people like Stan Brakhage, um, you know, experimental cinema that can actually be emotional without narrative. Mm -hmm. And I think you, when you present, um, a lot of people are getting into VJing now. That's a big thing. And every, you know, every major pro event you go to nowadays, it's about projection. Uh -huh. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot of people moving into that direction of storytelling without words. You're going to sure. be seeing... A lot of filmmakers are actually becoming DJs now. It's Peter Greenaway's DJing, Werner Herzog's DJing. Really? Yeah. How oh, fascinating. Jim yeah. Baylog said yesterday, who you know, who's, who's done a lot of work in ice, he said that he has always been a, you know, a guy who wanted to put a picture in a box and then put that picture in a book. And, <laughs> and he said he, that's been his life for 30-plus you know, years of his professional career. And, you know, picture, print, so on. And he said what he did, what happened with him with Tracy Nice has been so much beyond the impact of all of that time putting the boxes. He said, moving pictures make a difference. That's a great, I like, I mean, for me as an artist who shows with museums and galleries, it's kind of a funny thing because the, everybody for multimedia, especially film, a lot of film directors like Michel Gondry, for example, mm -hmm. um, he actually did some installations of his own, or Peter Greenaway is actually doing sure. a lot of art. So people have a, who have a good eye and an ability to kind of pull you into this frame of what they're talking about, the frame doesn't matter anymore. That's when, when you're talking about putting something in the box. What matters is the actual context. And I think it's a paradox because film always, I think, presents information in a way that, even if you don't speak the language, if I'm watching a Chinese film that's in Mandarin, sure. and I can it's watch... It's got something to say. So. Yeah, you can kind of get... It's a language that everyone speaks, but we might not actually speak the spoken word, you know? I think that makes a ton of sense. Paul, it's great to have you here at Mountain Film. I'm so glad you've enjoyed it. I know <coughs> you were a little curious about what this was about. I'm glad that, <laughs> that you pursued that curiosity, and, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really glad you've had a weekend to remember. Yeah, I, 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 we, this is the beginning of hopefully a long conversation. We've we hey. got to figure out some fun angles for part two. I mean, You know, we'll be yeah. back. <laughs> hey, thank you. All right. Paul Miller, appreciate it.